I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order that a record show that a quorum of members is present. The meeting has been duly called and note that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It is 6 o'clock. If you would, please stand with me as Mrs. Bush leads us in the invocation and the pledges of allegiance. Please join me if you wish. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for all your blessings, for the successful outcomes of our school events, for the safety of our students this prom season, and for all of our staff members, both the teachers and support staff. We come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Be with us in our discussions and help us to be wise in the decisions we make for the good of all those who have placed their trust and confidence in our leadership. Give us insight to lead with integrity, that our decisions may reflect what is right and good. Fill us with your grace, God, as we make decisions that affect students, staff, faculty, and all residents of Conroe Independent School District. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In Texas Pledge, honor, honor the Texas, Texas flag, flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Bush. Item 2A, Special District Recognition, Students Together res Achieving Results, STAR Program Graduates. Dr. Stockton. Hey, it's my pleasure to introduce Jim Caker, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, to uh, get us rolling tonight. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Uh, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, thank you so much for recognizing our STAR program here tonight. Um, it's really a pleasure uh, to bring these students before you that um, are our graduates this year from STAR program. Uh, at this time, I'd like to bring uh, Veronica Martin, our uh, college and career uh, readiness specialist, up to speak on their behalf. Good evening, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. This evening, we recognize and celebrate our graduating STAR students. First, we must begin with the most intricate part of our students' success, their parents. At this time, we would like to ask the parents and guests who are able to join us this evening to please stand. Thank you. This group of students have been led by a remarkable group of counselors. The students have participated in various activities through their four years in high school. The counselors met with their STAR students on a regular basis to give them the support as it relates to academics, job and careers, and post-secondary opportunities. Annually, the students participate in the Ropes Challenge course to promote leadership, team building, and character development. Over the course of four years, the, students, the STAR students have visited colleges and universities such as Sam Houston University, University of Houston Downtown, Lone Star, Texas Southern University, and a host of others. We have conducted an exit survey of our 2016 graduating class. The results indicated 70.6 are first generation. 73 said that they have gotten to know adults on their campus and district and through the district through this program. When asked how they viewed their future and how it has changed over the years, some of those responses were, it has showed me that I try, if I try hard enough, I can complete, compete, complete any course of action or goal I set for myself. I've become more knowledgeable about how the college process actually works and how important it is to get ahead, start on the career that you want to pursue. 55% of our students will be going to a two-year college. 26.5% will be going to a four-year university. 2.9 will be going to the military. 2.9 will be going into the full-time workforce. Some of the colleges and universities of interest are Texas A&M Kingsville, Lone Star, Texas Southern University, Blaine College, Sam Houston, and Texas State, and Northwest Vista College, and that's just to name a few. Some of their career interests are business management, 
welding, cosmetology, education, and law enforcement, and many others. 44.1% have applied for either financial aid and scholarships. Some of those students have been awarded or have applied for such scholarships as Women of Vision, Lone Star Honors College Chancellor Fellow, Houston Association of Hispanic Media, Sam Houston Electricity, Intergy Young Minds, and Lone Star Trustees. We will have some students that's here tonight that will speak to you regarding the STAR, their experiences in the STAR program. First, we will have Dania Salinas from Caney Creek High School. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, ever since my freshman year of high school, my plan was to attend a four-year school, believing that that was my requirement. Um, definitely much better than going to community college. I felt like I felt like attending community college was setting was settling for less or just like a grade 13. Also, I honestly didn't want to say stay in this town since I lived this I lived here since birth. I wanted a chance to seek out new experiences. After receiving an invitation from the STAR program, I was thrilled for this opportunity to be able to visit different universities. The STAR program allowed me to meet other students with the same dream of attending four years of school. Visiting universities was so much fun, meeting, <laughs> meeting professors, taking advice from actual college students, and listening to their experiences. The trips, right, the trips provided me time to see how it, the, how it feels to be a college student for a day. Eating lunch on the campus was my favorite part of the trip. Like, come on, who, who likes free food? <laughs> <laughs> when we visited San Jacinto Community College, I witnessed, I witnessed students involved with the professors. I saw them interacting with other students while walking, in, walking to class. Everyone knew everybody, which reminded me of a big family. It was a community college, and I decided that maybe community college could be a good thing. As a result of, a, of this experience, I considered other colleges and now planning attending Northwest Vista Community College in San Antonio to study digital video and cinema production, eventually earning a bachelor degree in journalism, and someday maybe work in the broadcasting field. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to Connor ISD and the teachers and counselors from this district for opening new doors for students through the STAR program. Thank you. Thank you, Dania. The next student we have from Conroe High School, Dalen Jefferson. Good evening, how are you doing today? Fine, good. good. I'm going to tell you about my experiences, um, how they've changed since freshman year of high school and since becoming in the STAR program. As a freshman and a sophomore, college was only like something that I, that I really just played on the game. I watched football games on TV, and I was like, well, college seems nice, but I don't really have too much experience about anyone who has like college experience. I don't really know too many people who went to college. And in my direct family, none of my direct family members have been to college. But as coming in as a junior, I got an opportunity to join the STAR program, and we started going on trips. And I started to see the college life. And then I noticed, I was like, well, the students don't look any different. They don't talk any different. They look just like me. They're just probably a couple years older. Yeah. And I got to see how they live, how they manage themselves. And I noticed that college is really an, a goal that I can achieve. Like it's something that I can do and I can actually be good at. And as I started to look around, um, I talked to a couple of people and I noticed I liked, I took a couple of surveys at colleges and I noticed I like to help people and also noticed I'm good at math. So that's why when I go to college, I want to be, um, study education and become a math teacher. Awesome. And, <laughs> And also, I really liked the experience because it helped me just venture out a little bit because at first I was kind of in a shell, and like I didn't 
like want to talk to other people. I didn't want to see new things. But going on all the college visit, visits helped me like figure out like what I want to do in my life. And that's why next year I'll be going to Kilgore Junior College to pursue my dream of playing football and becoming a math teacher. Awesome. Like your Thank you, Dalen. And one thing that I will say, uh, when I first met Dalen at Conroe High School, he was in his shell. Now I think we're best buds. So now he gives me a high five every time I go in. And, and what he doesn't realize is that he has a job waiting here when he gets his math certification. The next student we have is Tarion Keelan from Oak Ridge High School. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess we're supposed to talk about um, the STAR program and like how it impacted us. So I guess I'll start with freshman year when I got into the program. Um, my freshman year, my counselor, she left. So we didn't really do anything in the program my freshman year. So as far as college goes at that time, I was just like, oh yeah, I'm going to college, get away from home, go party, turn up. Like, <laughs> y'all know, I just had that just had that mindset because I didn't have anybody to really talk to me and guide me through that whole press process in freshman year. But once I got to sophomore year and I switched to the senior campus of Oak Ridge High School and talking to Ms. Doak and Miss um, Matlock and we had a different counselor at the, at the time doing the program with us, I started to realize that it's not just about oh, you're going to leave home, you're going to go party, you're going to go have fun. It's actually you have to work. It costs money. Like, you're an adult. <laughs> you're on your own. And so I was just like, okay, well, that's fine. I can do that. I'm going to just, I like helping people. I like medicine and stuff. So I'm going to go into the medical field. But I didn't really know what I wanted to do exactly. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to go to a four-year university. Because I've always taken honors classes. So to me, viewing a community college that was like oh no that's a level class like you don't take levels classes you're an honors you're going to go to a four-year so as we started going to different colleges and touring different campuses and talking to different people getting connected with people i started to understand that not everything is for everybody like i wanted to be a medical in the medical field but i didn't know what i wanted to do like i'm going into nursing now but at the time i didn't understand that there's different levels to it like you're just not gonna go okay I want to be a nurse go to school give a shot and then that's it <laughs> so so after um, talking to different people and um, talking to different people on the campuses and them telling us about what kind of nursing positions there are what are the different levels to nursing what you have to do in school to get to the level that you want to be on mm -hmm. And as far as what school may be right for you financially, financially and things like that. Because I was just like, okay, I'm going to go to school. It don't cost that much money. But then you go on campus and they're like, oh, yeah, tuition is so-and-so thousand dollars. And I'm just like, who paying for all of that? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, talking to Ms. Dokes and Ms. Matlock, it's like, okay, well, maybe a community college or junior college might be a smarter decision until you get to you know for sure what you want to do because I'm very indecisive I change my mind a lot so starting at a community college would be a better choice for me knowing the way that I am and the way that I process things and the way that I think and get caught up and procrastinate and stuff like that and then also financially because I plan on moving out of state so as far as out-of-state tuition goes, because I had to learn about that, too, because I didn't even know that was a thing, <laughs> like, it's better to start at a community college in the state that you want to go to. So that way, when you're paying that out-of-state tuition, it's way cheaper than going to, like, a private university and paying $300,000 <laughs> in tuition. So I guess the program really helps me understand Oh, I'm sorry. Understand more about what I wanted to do and how I was going to get to the level that I wanted to get. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Tarion. 
Our last student is from the Willens High School, Melanie Mortensen. Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys today? Good um, I would like to start from when I was in freshman year, how I would not be standing here if someone asked me to speak. As I build up a lot of confidence of meeting new teachers, meeting new adults, I have built up more courage ever since I was in kindergarten. A lot of teachers have asked me, what would you like to be in your future? First thing in my mind, I want to be a princess. <laughs> As I got, we all do. <laughs> That's what Melanie wanted, too. <laughs> you bet it. As I got older, and I've seen my grandfather take care of many stray dogs from Mexico, where I was raised, all of my life I've seen my grandfather pick up strays, pit bulls who have been in dog fighting, shepherds, and other dogs that have been abused. So as I got older, my life has decided to go to that branch of kind of medical, veterinary. Um, as I do see how the finances are, I'm kind of decreasing that chances, but now I still want to stay in the medical kind of terms. I would like to be in nursing. So visiting all these colleges has really opened up a lot of mindsets because I've seen the pharmacy school over in Houston, I've seen the medical school in Sam Houston, and I can also do nursing in Lone Star. Again, if you asked me what I was going to do maybe two years ago, three years ago, I would probably still say princess. <laughs> Some of us are still hoping for that. <laughs> I'm still hoping. My mom still says the same. <laughs> um, what I would like to say is that I've really enjoyed the STAR program because it has opened up a lot of opportunities for these students especially. Seeing from the Woodland students that we've known for the party students or the rich kids or daddy does this or daddy's okay with this, I would like to represent that our students aren't always those kind of slackers. Especially from coming the, from the STAR program has opened up a lot of opportunities like getting new jobs, being able to talk to a lot of adults, especially when you're doing an interview. It's helped me open up and helped me to conversate a little bit more. So Great. I would like to say thank you to the STAR program for opening these opportunities for me. Awesome. Awesome. Great job. I think I'm going to sign up for that STAR program. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. Now the STAR counselors will introduce their STAR students who are able to be here with us this evening. Mr. Sanders, are you going to do us the honors to see you? Okay. First, we're going to call up um, Ms. Cindy Harn from Caney Creek High School. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm really honored to be here tonight to get to present these students to you. Um, when I first started in Conroe ISD four years ago, I began working in the STAR program, and I will say it's a very fulfilling position, uh, part of my job, and I'm very thrilled to watch these students, the ones that I've worked with for four years, cross the stage. Not all of them could come tonight. I wish they could, but um, I can say from my point of view, I see that the students have gained a lot. And I've learned a lot as a counselor, too, and I feel like that my experience is taking these students on these trips helps me to speak to all my students. So thank you for that opportunity. All right, the first student I would like to recognize this evening, her name is Katie Guevara. <laughs> Next is Daphne Juarez. Next is Anna Posada. And lastly, uh, again, we will see Dania Salinas. Thank you, Ms. Horn. The next campus that will be represented is Conroe High School. We have Tiffany Arsenault and Kendrick Williams. Good afternoon to Mr. Husbands and the school board, Dr. Stockton. I want to say that I'm really honored and glad to be here a second year in a row. 
Um, this is my second year being a counselor with the STAR program. And although we're small in numbers, a lot of our senior members are very responsible. They're working. And that's why they're not here on this evening. But I do thank Dalen for stepping up and coming up and really speaking well. I told him I was very proud of him. Real quickly, not only is he a good speaker, but he was also our homecoming king. Ooh. So I'd like to present him with his certificate, Dalen Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I'm new to Conroe. This is my first year working with the STAR students, but in that time I met a lot of great students who I have great expectations for. And um, I'd just like to say to all the STAR students, um, basically, um, you students have no ceiling. Whatever you can see in your own mind, you can go out there and get it. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about financing anything. Just see it, and you'll find a way to go out there and achieve it. Okay, um, I'd like to introduce um, Brianna Walker. Our next campus is Oak Ridge High School. Sean Matlock is our representing um, star counselor. Good evening, Dr. Stockton and the board. I appreciate the opportunity to be here to represent Oak Ridge. We have a wonderful STAR program. Uh, Tyrion filled my every desire in a speech. Because uh, when I asked her, she says she's kind of back up, but she's going to speak tonight. And I said, Do you, are you ready? And she goes, I think I'll wing it. So I was, <laughs> I was pretty nervous. But I do want to say, she has done an outstanding job. And so our senior here for representing the STAR program is Tyrion Keelan. Our next campus is the Woodlands High School. We have Julie Crane from the ninth grade center representing for the Woodlands. give our regrets our senior counselors are actually having awards night tonight at the Woodlands High School so they're they would love to be here so I am representing them and I would love to present this award to Melanie Mortensen y'all slide around here work and y'all get to get back in here with your kids please I'll slide around here I would like for everyone to stand and recognize our graduating STAR students of 2016. Thank you so much. I just want to share with the board as well as, well as the counselors and administrations of CISD. I've been really fortunate to take this ride in 2015, 2015, 2016 school year. It has been wonderful. This is an awesome group of counselors with an awesome group of students. And thank you for letting me be a part of that. Thank you. This is speech night, so I have a few words to say on behalf of the board. Uh, there's an old American proverb that says, if you can read, thank a teacher. The PTA National Teacher Appreciation Week was last week, May 2nd through the 6th. But any day is a good day to thank a teacher. Teaching goes beyond the classroom, beyond instruction, beyond the love of words. Teachers make sure that students get fed. They make sure that they have transportation to and from school each day. They read to students. They loan books to students so that they can read to others. And they hand out school supplies for those who have need. Teachers make connections with their students. They make our classrooms safe places for learning and expressions of self. They help students to feel accepted and loved. They help students to know he or she is important and that he or she has something to contribute. I'm not talking about falsely nurturing self-esteem, but rather showing kids that they all have unique strengths and talents 
and that each student, no matter his strengths or her strengths or his talents or her talents, you all have value. These are just a few of the things teachers do. I could go on and on. One of our past star graduates said, I was on the verge of dropping out. She said this about her freshman year. School counselors basically pushed me, she said, and encouraged me to go through high school. I think everybody should join STAR because it helped people involved in the wrong things in schools to make the right choices. STAR is designed to build strong relationships between counselors and teachers and students who have so much potential but need someone to help. STAR is a proactive measure to help make sure all students have a chance at graduating. Colin Powell, one of our most, uh, nation's most respected leaders, once said, a dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. Students, that's what you have done. Your teachers, your counselors are all proud of you. Your families are all proud of you. Your school administrators are all proud of you. And yes, your school board is proud of you. I leave you with this one great quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Congratulations. Start with me. <laughs> Congratulations, Princess. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Best of luck to you. Very proud. Very good. Very nice. That's wing it. I'd like to see it playing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. Hey. Oh, I dare anybody to tell me that's not worth the board's time to listen to that. Amen. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Item 2B, Special District Recognition Ambassador Awards for the Child Nutrition Department, Dr. Stock. Okay, this time I'll introduce Robin Hughes, Director of Child Nutrition, to introduce our recipients. Good evening, President, husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Thank you for recognizing our Child Nutrition Ambassador Award recipients tonight. Our first recipient is Carla Pickworth. Carla is the cafeteria manager at Burnham Woods Elementary. She's been with us for 13 years. She takes pride in her management <laughs> position and her number one priority is making sure the students receive a quality meal. The campus staff love having her and request that she be assigned to the school every year. She's eager to help. She's an excellent trainer and she can be trusted to complete any task correctly. She has high expectations and won't accept anything less. She's a true leader in our department. Our next recipient is Donna Wilmoth. Donna is the cafeteria manager at Hawk High School. She's been with us for five years. She transferred to Hawk this school year and has done a fantastic job, especially with controlling inventory. Her food quality is great and the students and staff enjoy having her. 
She loves working in child nutrition and learning new information. She goes ab above and beyond by voluntarily taking classes offered on weekends to learn more about nutrition. She's very valuable to the district. Our next recipient is Gloffy Coy. <laughs> Gloffy has been with us for 16 years and she's an associate in McCullough Junior High. Gloffy helps wherever needed and is always willing to help train new employees. She's happy to come in early or stay late if needed. No matter what register she runs, she has more transactions than anyone. <laughs> She's dedicated to the department and has even rearranged personal appointments if she thinks the kitchen can't make it without her on that day. Aww. She's an asset to our team. <laughs> our next recipient is Maria Guerra. Maria is an associate at Travis Intermediate. <laughs> She's been with us for 15 years and goes above and beyond by working efficiently and she makes sure everything in the kitchen is done correctly. Her attitude is great and she gets along with everyone. Maria happily helps out at other campuses and does so with a smile. She's always willing to help where needed and isn't afraid of any task. She's a pleasure to have in our department. Our next recipient is Jolie Wiskowski. <laughs> Jolie is an associate at Buckaloo Elementary and has been with the district for two years. She's taken on every task in the kitchen and has done a fantastic job. The students adore her and she treats each and every one of them as if they are the most important child in the cafeteria. She even wishes them a happy birthday when they come through the line. Wow. She's very dedicated and it shows. We're lucky to have her. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. Get over there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we want to take a picture of you. On behalf of the board, I'd, I'd like to speak very quickly. Uh, and thank you once again for everything that you do. Uh, I've got four kids and feeding them is difficult. I can't imagine feeding 56,000 students every single day, Monday through Friday, uh, especially the picky ones like my son, which you know Blake. Yeah, she knows Blake. She knows my son. I, I can understand why her register is the, the most successful because my son probably goes to hers, I'm sure. But on behalf of the school board, thank you for everything that you guys do. It's very, very important. Uh, we love that you guys take the position so serious because it is a very important position, child nutrition. And so thank you for everything that you do. Appreciate you. <laughs> Item 2C, Special District Recognition and Ambassador Awards Transportation Department employees. Dr. Stock. At this time, I'll introduce Sam Davila, our Director of Transportation, to introduce our transportation recipients. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It's my distinct pleasure to, um, excuse me, to award this year's Ambassador Awards. Um, I'd like to go ahead and start off with uh, Ms. Sean Livingston. Ms. 
Sean is responsible. She's our South County video tech. Uh, so you can imagine a lot of the things that comes across her desk and a lot of the videos that she gets to see. Uh, Shauna only covers all the videos for South County, but she also drives the route as needed and she's always willing to help out in the office. So a uh, tremendous asset to our team. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Von Dice. He must be a favorite. He must be. Mr. Dice, uh, one afternoon, found himself in a precarious situation. He was on his route picking up his students, and he recognized that there was a, a mother with a child that was in distress. So uh, he stopped, rendered aid, picked him up, and, and took him to a safe location and called the authorities. So uh, we uh, appreciate his caring and uh, his attitude towards the safety of all of our students and our parents. Amen. Uh, next, next, I would like to recognize uh, Angie Abrams. I almost called her by her maiden name. She recently got married as well, so congratulations, congratulations Angie. All right. Uh, Angie is one of our. <laughs> uh, Angie is one of our East County drivers. Um, Angie is just one of those persons that just goes above and beyond. She's always there to help out the staff. Uh, a big part of her contribution is to the morale of East County. When you go out there, you can recognize that that center uh, just has this synergistic uh, energy that uh, you can see they enjoy coming to work. Um, for those who don't always know what it goes on out of East County, we have home buses. We have about 40 home buses where drivers take their buses home. So it's even that much more difficult to have that kind of teamwork when your uh, team is spread mm -hmm. throughout the East County. So, Angie, I really appreciate everything you do. Our picnic would not be a success without your help. Next, I'd like to introduce Mark Harrison. <clears throat> Mark is one of our Woodlands standby drivers. Um, I received a letter from a parent uh, regarding uh, what Mark did this last year, end of the year. Um, uh, the parents stated, uh, Mark is the epitome of Dr. Stockton's motto that every child in CISD needs to know that every adult in CISD cares for them. Mark took it upon himself, and it's difficult as a standby driver because you jump from route to route, but he had this route for a little while. He recognized the students that were doing well, and he gave them books uh, as a reward for doing well. And the parent recognized that and really enjoyed the fact that we have uh, people like that that care about our students and our education. Next, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, my uh, North County shop foreman, David Duza. Uh, I just learned how to pronounce his name today. <laughs> um, David's been our shop foreman for uh, well over 15 years in North County. He's been our go-to. Uh, we were short a fleet manager, and David would step up and fill in for that position. Uh, he was instrumental, and in, everybody knows the whole one stick or two step rule. Well, that applied to all of our school buses as well. Wow. So uh, oh, David wow. was instrumental in making sure that all of our buses were inspected like they were supposed to be, registrations oh, done, a big task, not to mention a lot of the other things that were going on while he was trying to make that happen. So uh, David has been a tremendous asset. David is retiring this year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, we are going to sorely miss him. And hopefully Terry, his wife back there, uh, will allow him to maybe uh, stop by every once in a while and <laughs> give us a hand if needed. Thank you, David. <laughs> and last but not least, my North County manager, Tawana Salinas. I know there's always a high expectation of, of our managers and, and our administrators to always do the right thing. Um, Tawana is one of those managers that will go above and beyond because she cares. Uh, we had an incident recently where we could not locate a student and um, we were trying to find out where that student got off the bus. We knew they rode the bus, we talked to the principal and everything. Well, at 10 o'clock at night, Tawana took it upon herself to drive back up to the center go through all the late run files that we have and find her pass to determine that we knew that student had gotten on the bus and where they got off. 
that helped at least our police officers kind of identify maybe what was going on. Uh, good ending, the student was found. Mom was not happy, but we were happy that the student was found. And uh, so it was a happy ending yeah. for, for at least all of us. So uh, I appreciate her going above and beyond to make sure that our kids are safe and that our drivers are, are well taken care of. Just a few quick comments for transportation. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Stockton and the Board of Trustees, we'd just like to say thank you to you team of folks. You guys are vital to getting us where we are as a district. I have a few few more ponds here, so bear with me. You guys keep us running on all cylinders. You're the driving force behind our district. You guys go the extra mile for our kids. You're often the first smiling face that our kids see on the road to success. You are the last smiling face that our kids see after a long day's journey. I think I'll end with that one. Um, we, we just like to simply say that uh, we can't say thank you enough for all that you guys do. Um, transportation is just so valuable and so vital to what we do as a district. So you guys are just a driving force, as I said before, behind that. And we just say thank you guys. Appreciate everything. Mr. Husbands, I was wondering if you knew who wrote Mr. Williams' stuff for him. When he gets up there. Was that you? I, 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 I hear he's pretty original. Yeah. All his original work. I'm going to give him That's credit. That's not bad. Credit. That's not bad. I thought it was very nicely done. Very good. This is Godfrey. Do we have anybody signed up for citizen participation? No, sir, we don't. Thank you. Very good. Item three, uh, consent agenda. I've had no request to remove any items. Is that still so? Yes. Hearing none, I would entertain I move, a motion. We approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. I didn't pass it. Okay, at this at this time we're going to adjourn uh, for a public hearing. It is um, 642 and Dr. Mm -hmm. Stockton. All right, thank you, Mr. Husbands. Okay, this time we're going to conduct a public hearing for the turnaround plan for Austin Elementary School. Uh, Shelly Winkler, our Director of Elementary Education, is here to present the information. At the end of her presentation, if you have a comment, we'd ask you to come to the podium and state your name and make your comments. And if you'll keep them to just a couple of minutes, we'd appreciate that. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Shelly. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my privilege this evening to present for you the approval for the Austin Turnaround Plan. To begin with this evening, we're going to start with a timeline of things that we have approved and where we're going with Austin Elementary. In August 2015, uh, final results were released and Austin Elementary received a second year improvement <coughs> required rating. In December, you may remember that we uh, approved the targeted improvement plan for Austin Elementary that focused on three goals and three specific areas that the campus would focus. Tonight we're here for the second piece of that plan or the second piece of the process called the turnaround plan, which is one overarching initiative that will support the areas in place for the targeted improvement plan. 
In August, we will receive final accountability results. In August, campuses that have developed a turnaround plan but receive a rating of met standard will once again address the turnaround plan with their local school boards to determine if the plan should be implemented, modified, or discontinued. We are very optimistic that Austin will receive this rating, especially in light of fourth grade students that have made significant progress on campus and district assessments. The Austin Targeted Improvement Plan includes goals um, that focus on guided reading, writer's workshop, and monitoring the progress of each, um, of each student. To assist in these areas, the campus has provided extensive staff development, modeling by campus and district coaches, and feedback to improve instruction. In addition, teachers and campus instructional coaches meet weekly to monitor the progress of struggling students and design instruction to meet their individual needs. Along with the targeted improvement plan, the campus is required under House Bill 1842 to complete a turnaround plan that encompasses, again, one overarching initiative that will address the targeted improvement goals and produce significant gains over a two-year period. The purpose of this evening is to review the turnaround plan that, if approved, would go into effect fall of 2016. The staff of Austin Elementary and District Support have worked collaboratively to develop this plan. Tonight we have with us some members of the Austin team that we would like to introduce at this time. From the leadership team we have Principal Dr. Serena Pearson, Assistant Principals Kathleen Moe and Michelle Allen, Instructional Coaches Angela Martinez, Perla Cisneros, and Courtney Thibodeau. And also serving as a district representative on our team as Director of Testing Assessment, Dr. Julie English, and our Professional Service Provider, J.C. Harvell. Joining us this evening are also members of the Austin Site-Based Committee and the Turnaround Development Committee, including Cheryl Howe, Kevin Molander, Miranda Brown, Bailey Smiley, Michelle Mader, Jessica Macon, Christy Christopher, Michelle Williams, and Lily Cuervo. We appreciate their commitment and the work of the entire staff of Austin Elementary during this planning process. They are an incredible group of teachers to work with. When deciding on an initiative, it, is, it was important to complement the targeted improvement instruction plan that is already in place at Austin Elementary, as well as the Texas Teacher Evaluation Support System. The initiative developed by Austin Elementary is Instructional Rounds. While many of our campuses have started this informal process of teacher observations, this initiative at Austin Elementary is a formalized process developed by educational research, researcher Robert Marzano, and the training at Austin Elementary will also be provided by the Marzano Research Group. The vision of the campus is that instructional rounds will provide job-embedded professional development, strengthen learning communities, and the trust among staff. Instructional rounds is a research-based protocol rooted in the idea of teacher growth. The process works off the same premise of medical rounds, where professionals learn from, a, from one another to improve their practice. During rounds, three to four teachers will observe another teacher that has volunteered to open his or her classroom. During this time, specific teaching or classroom management strategies will be targeted. Observing teachers will have the opportunity to affirm their own teaching practices, observe practices in which they would like to grow, and take away strategies they can implement immediately in their classroom. Upon the completion of each set of rounds, campus and district instructional coaches will assist in building their practice and pedagogy through coaching cycles, additional classroom modeling, and feedback. Coaches will work with teachers on identified areas of, of improvement for an extended period of time in order to refine those instructional practices. This may include several observations or rounds focused on those sp specific areas of need. Once this goal is met, teachers will repeat the process of instructional rounds and a new goal will be developed. This will give teachers not only the opportunity to observe master teachers at work, but provide individual professional development plans, 
build collaboration, and value the work of our teachers at Austin Elementary. This plan has been presented to the Austin site-based decision-making team and has been made available for teachers, parents, and community members to provide feedback. We ask that upon the conclusion of the public hearing, you approve the turnaround plan for Austin Elementary. Okay, at this time, if anyone wants to make a comment, we'll ask you to come to the podium and state your name and make your comments. Okay, see none, that concludes our public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are. Thank you. I just said thank you. <laughs> Such a scary presence, I know. Okay, uh, we're, we're back in session at uh, 6 50. Um, item 4A. Okay, at this time we'll ask your approval of the turnaround plan for Austin Elementary School. I hear a motion. So moved. Second the motion. Motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> questions? I did have one question. So, so, so this is our turnaround plan for Austin. How does the district? How, how? Who's responsible? I guess is a better way to put that for monitoring that the plan has actually been executed. The administration at the campus is responsible, but we also have a district support person, which is myself, okay. um, and we make sure that they have all the resources that they need from the campus and from the district level. Okay. We do have to, to turn it into the Texas Education Agency as well, where we have someone that we work with closely. Fair enough. All right. Sounds good. Good deal. Any, any other questions? I actually had one as well, Shelly. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, the teachers that are being observed, it sounded like you said they would be volunteering to yes. be observed. So it's yes. not like we're putting us any specific teachers on the spot that, hey, we're going to come in and observe you. That is a voluntary thing. It's voluntary. Okay. We presented it to the turnaround uh, development committee. We presented it to the site-based team. And there was um, an enthusiasm for doing it. It didn't seem like we would be at a loss for teachers okay. to observe. And additionally, the ones that are doing the observing, are we staying within the same grade or are we going to cross grades and maybe collaborate a little bit that way as well? Um, no, it will not be in the same grade. It will okay. be in a master teacher's room um, and it does not have lines as far as bilingual education, special education, general education. It's good teaching practices and, and good classroom management practices. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? No. no. Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the plan signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Very good. And thank, thank you, you for your hard work. Thank, thank you, you all for being here tonight and in support of this campus. Thank Mr. Husbands, if I could, please. Could, could all the folks uh, that are working it with Austin please stand again for me, please? Three things as you stand. Three things. One, everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> Go ahead and breathe. Uh, number two, we appreciate your hard work. We know how hard you're working, how dedicated you are to those children. We appreciate that. And thirdly, you can go home now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Item 5A, select construction manager at risk for new intermediate school in Oak Ridge feeder zone. Dr. Stock. Okay, I'll ask Easy Foster, our director of planning construction, to come make the uh, next three presentations. <clears throat> President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure tonight to bring forward for your approval the selection of a construction manager at risk for our new intermediate school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone, which we'll call Flex 18, and then authorize our superintendent to negotiate and execute the construction manager at risk contract. In November 2015, our board of trustees selected the IBI group as the architect for the new intermediate school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone, <coughs> Flex 18. IBI group has prepared and published our request for qualifications for construction manager at risk for this project. We had seven companies respond to our RFQ. Based on our published criteria, each of the companies uh, qualification statements were reviewed and determined to make a short list of uh, firms to participate in the second step of our two-step process. We shortlisted four firms, Balfour Brady Construction, Brookstone Construction, Duratech Incorporated, and Marshall Construction. Each of these four firms did participate in our second step of our two-step process. 
After evaluations, Marshall Construction was selected as the offeror who submitted the proposal determined to be the best value for our district based on our published criteria and the ranking evaluation. We've made the ranking evaluation of all the contractors uh, as part of this approval item. Uh, it was in your in your package for mm -hmm. review. At this time, we're requesting your approval of this selection. Sir, no. I hear a motion. Motion. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Questions? <coughs> all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Item 5B, uh, consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price minute for district-wide safety and security upgrades. Dr. Stock. Mr. Foster. Mm -hmm. This time I'd request <coughs> your consideration and approval of a guaranteed maximum price amendment for our district-wide safety and security upgrades project, this being phase one. On March 22nd, 2016, our Board of Trustees selected Ellisor Constructors as the district's construction manager at risk for our district-wide safety and security upgrades project. This project is set up to be phased to better facilitate the work throughout the entire district over the next several years. Based on Ellisor Constructions Constructors' proposal for Phase 1, we've negotiated a guaranteed maximum price of $5,212,837. I'd like to point out that this does include an alternate for door position switches, which are contacts that allow our central administration to see when doors are open or closed on the exterior of our building. Mm -hmm. So the total price, including that amendment or including that alternate, is the five million two hundred twelve thousand eight hundred thirty-seven dollars. At this time, we're requesting your approval of this guaranteed maximum price. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. Thank you. Second. Motion in the second. Discussion. Questions. I have a question. Very good. I just want to understand the schools involved. Yes, sir. Do you have those listed there? I, they are, I mean, they're not listed in the package you've got, but I have a list right. of them if you'd like to hear. Yes, I would. <laughs> Thank you. And, and the reason I'm asking that question, I, I thought that we had all the security. <coughs> these are upgrades, right? So we're not, at, we're not implementing security. We're just upgrading the security that's there. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Um, all right. These so, projects. And I don't need to hear the names of the schools because it was my understanding. We did them all. That we've already. Right put in yeah. the security at all of the schools in the district. So now we're just, in, it's a matter of upgrading. Well, there's different levels, correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Okay. That's what but I'm trying to understand. The camera, the camera that stops you at the front door is different than the, the security upgrades that keep you from going down the hall. Yes, sir. This this project is actually looking at the building in, in its whole, Holistic. including the site. So there's fence involved in some of the campuses. Mm -hmm. There's some vestibule improvements to bring everybody in line with what we would consider our standard today. There's also camera improvements where we're filling in the spots where we might have dark areas or black spots or blind spots within the campus. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Good job. Any other questions? Discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you. And uh, item 5C, capital improvement update. All right. At this time, I'd like to update you on our capital improvements that we have in progress throughout the district. Starting with the Woodlands High School, this is where we are uh, in, in, we're improving our girls' locker room facilities. The, the new section of the building, the additions that we made, are uh, they're almost done. The fire marshal walked through those, those areas today to uh, give us a list of everything we need to do to certify occupancy for the new site. So over the next couple of weeks, the, the, uh, as, as school winds down, the athletics department will be moving into these facilities and we'll take over and renovate the existing facility uh, as school ends. Very nice. Moving forward to our new high school, uh, this is a picture, it seems like you saw the same picture last month. Uh, what you can't see is what's going on uh, on the ground. Uh, an interesting point of, you'll see future here is from this perspective, you can actually see our Flex 17 site uh, in the uh, upper right hand corner at the because it's Creekside is across the, across the grill across the Grand Parkway from the high school and right at the end of Creekside is our flex 17 site as well uh, getting into the meat and potatoes what's going on out there we're in 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 the process of installing the foundations for the for the building itself uh, which is a long uh, arduous process for building that size and also we're doing the underground, the storm water, the domestic water, the uh, uh, sanitary sewer systems, everything that you don't see uh, from an airplane view 30,000 feet above. 
On our 2016 life cycle project, uh, Runyon is uh, one of our major areas of focus where we're upgrading the mechanical systems and everything above the ceiling in this, in this campus. It is uh, on target, uh, right where we actually a little bit better than we plan to be at this point during the year. The equipment is in, uh, the new air conditioning, air handlers, things that way are in place. So when school gets out, we will be undoing the ceilings and working on everything on the inside. So our pictures might look like they're going backwards for the June board meeting. At Cane Creek High School, you'll see we are uh, replacing the roof structure there. So the color conversion of that building is, is underway. So you're, you're seeing that take place on the athletics portion of the building now. Uh, moving towards the academic portions of the building, uh, we're preparing for the new metal to go on. So that project is progressing well. In addition, we're working at uh, Wood Forest Stadium. So what you're seeing here is the new turf going down. The old turf has been removed, so the new material is going back in. Uh, and that project is progressing as planned. Moving over to our CTE and robotic project, this brings us back to Caney Creek High School. Uh, it's a new project, so we recently authorized it. Last month we didn't have any pictures, but we told you we were ordering equipment. That is the same situation we're in this month. Everything is staged to start work as soon as uh, the school is out for the summer. Here you're just seeing a brief example of a plan of what we're doing at Caney Creek. We're doing cosmetology welding, construction trades lab, and a robotics lab. Over at Oak Ridge High School ninth grade, uh, we're doing a welding lab. At Grangerland Intermediate, this is another job that is, is uh, <coughs> new to our update process. Uh, we're adding classrooms to that building. Uh, we've spent the last weekend uh, working around rainstorms, moving portable buildings. We'll complete the portable building moving this coming weekend, weather permitting, and that project will get underway uh, as immediately after school gets out. New elementary flex school number 17. I just showed you that site from a long distance away in just a few minutes ago, but that site is progressing well. Uh, we've this week, since this picture's been, been taken, we have started the building pad process, so next month you'll be able to see where the building is on this site. And that is what we've got underway. Well, real quick, real quick question, on, uh, just because uh, we talked about it before, about the all the rain that we've received. That Flex 17 elementary didn't seem to have any, any pooling concerns or flooding concerns, any of that kind of stuff as well. No, we're, we're in a good spot. The developer around us has their, their site infrastructure for their development in place. So we're draining into their storm system now. So we've got a few things. I mean, as we dig holes, we have to be mindful of them. But the site overall drains pretty well. Our contractors taking precautions to try to keep water moving away from where they're working mm -hmm. so that our critical path is affected as little as possible during the course of construction. Very good. Thank you. And I would ask the same question about the high school, basically the same question about the high school. Have you uh, had to take any measures to dry it up? I'm not talking about flooding. I know it's not flooding. Okay, mm -hmm. but I know that part. But I'm talking about, you know, uh, well, proceeding as planned. Right. We are proceeding as planned. Well, the, high, the, the magnitude of the size of the high school, the schedule for the, the activities that happen that are susceptible rain are, are much amplified over that of an elementary school. Where the elementary school will be open for about a month or so, the high school is going to be open for four or five months. So we, we took a proactive approach in putting that whole bid package together. So our building pad is stabilized, which we wouldn't normally do. The stabilization allows us to get on the building pad within hours of a rainstorm rather than having to wait days for it to dry out. So we've, we're, we're trying to be proactive uh, with that project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Thank you. Thank you. Item 6A, financial reports, Dr. Stock. Uh, Mr. Rice, please. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm here this evening to present the financial statements for the month of April. These statements will include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. This first statement we're looking at this evening is our balance sheet, and our balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances for the district. And each month, we always like to look at our cash and investments. If we concentrate here on the general fund, you'll see that we have bank deposits of $380,000, investments in our in our pools, $154 million. We have investments that are running a little less than a year of uh, $61 million. And then our longer term investments that we have with TCG advisors, uh, $50,600,000. 
We always also like to track our property tax to see how those collections are going. As you can see, we're, we're a little bit behind where we were last year, but we're almost at 98%. I feel confident we'll reach that 100% 100, 100 threshold that we do each year. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. It includes our revenues and expenditures and fund balance. Uh, revenues are made up of three categories, uh, local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. We can look at the detail of the local and intermediate sources in each one of the funds. And then also we can look at our year-to-date expenditures by major categories for each one of the fund. And once again, payroll is our largest expenditure in the general fund. Okay, now look at our pro projected unassigned fund balance for our general fund. We're looking at an increase of $675,000 uh, to a total of $115,792,000. And that is after anticipated transfer of $16 million to uh, debt service and our $25 million to the, to the uh, capital projects fund. Our projected fund balance and debt service, this has not changed. We're still looking at $39,267,000. And no change in our projection for child nutrition, an increase of $567,000 to $3,195,000. Now looking at our 2015 bond referendum status uh, for the month of April, we've currently expended and encumbered $85,266,000. We have an estimate to complete of $407,629,000, giving us a projected forecast of $492 million. That leaves us with $27 million in contingency for our total program of $520 million. Self-funded insurance, uh, total revenues for the year, $26,906,000. Total expenses, $26,770,000 for revenues over expenses of $136,000. We know we have the summer months coming up, so I, I say this every month, we're cautiously optimistic, but we do know those are usually high claim yeah. months. So, Our investments for the month, par value at the end of April was $450 million. The wham of our pools is one day, and we're yielding almost 50 basis points there. The WAM of our short-term investments that we keep at U.S. Bank was 127 days, and that's yielding almost 68 basis points. And once again, our longer-term investments that are with TCG Investment Advisors is 631 days, and that's yielding over 1%. And so the WAM of our combined portfolio is 82 days, and our portfolio is earning 58 basis points. And the yield to maturity of our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is at 21 basis points. And thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Nice Thank you. Item 7A, uh, draw proposal of termination of the contract for good cause. I'm sorry. Well, back to the board on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I move that the board withdraw its proposal to terminate for good cause the term contract of Kirk E. Smith and to authorize the superintendent to give notice to Mr. Smith of this action. I second the motion. I have a motion to second. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item 7B, consider non renewal term contract employee Kirk E. Smith. I, I'm. <laughs> Turn it back to the board. I'm Ms. Bush. I move that the board non renew the employment contract of Kirk E. Smith at the end of its current term and authorize the superintendent to give notice to Mr. Smith of this action. I second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any conversation or discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. 7C, to the purchase of approximately 15.59 acres school site in Oak Ridge, Peters on Dr. Stockton. I'll turn this over to Mrs. Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Not. As you know, we've been working on purchasing a site for an intermediate school in the Oak Ridge Peter Zone. We've uh, negotiated the details of the purchase contract, and we're asking that you approve that contract. It was attached to your in your board agenda item. Mm -hmm. The cost was three fifty per square foot, and it's a fifteen point five eight nine acre site. I have a motion. I move we approve. I second that motion. A motion and a second. Any conversation, or discussion, or questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item 7D, consider revisions to local board policies, DNA. Dr. Stock. Okay, one more time, Mrs. Gladys. 
Um, this is an information item for you. We're bringing you two policies, both related to the evaluation of professional staff. The first is DNA. As you know, the last several years, um, there's been the commissioner's been piloting a new teacher appraisal system called T-Test. Um, the time has come to um, implement that here. We ha had a committee form to help us make the choices that the district can can make, and that's what you see reflected in this particular policy. It's very similar in procedural mechanisms as PDAS. That really won't change that much. It's the philosophy or the focus of the T-test appraisal instrument is really what is different as far as, as teachers go. Um, for DNB, that's the policy that we're recommending to you for the rest of the staff that isn't required by state law to be um, evaluated under T-test. It's principals, administrators, and that policy just had some tweaks to it. But it says that they'll be evaluated every year. And so we'll bring this back to you in June and ask for approval. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Closed session of the board will now be held. Matters contained in the notice of this meeting is authorized by Section 551.071 and 551.072. 551.074 and 551.0821 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that if any final action, this final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting or at a subsequent public meeting of the board on notice thereof, as the board shall determine. Closed session of the board will now be held. It is 7 11. Back in the 8 15. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yep.